Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Warrior 2! In the last part we got here to the town of Hamlin and, well, now we're gonna continue on. Now, Hamlin, there's not much we can do here for right now, but right now I recommend you buy up to six medical herbs. Or at least have up to six in your inventory because the next section can kill you very easily if you are not prepared. And considering death is not something you really want to do in video games unless you're the one doing the death. If that makes sense. I kind of need to do that. Now, there are a couple things you can do here in Hamlin otherwise, though. Like, here is where you're technically supposed to find out about the lottery. Which I figured out I might as well show it off. Uh, I do believe that the slots are just there as a to make you think it's actually possible to not get a different uh, to get a different results. Uh, the moment that you say yes, your your result is determined. And here is a guy that allows you to save because you don't actually have to save with just uh, the kings in this game. Uh, these guys actually are pretty useful considering the return spell works differently in this one. And there's a random dog up there. We'll talk to that thing later. But now we're going to continue on towards the next area. Now be careful as soon as you cross this bridge, head south three towns and then head left. Because when you're over there, you're in an enemy domain for an enemy called a baboon, which I do not recommend fighting at this point. It'd be like fighting an ultimate weapon at the beginning of Final Fantasy VII. Anyway, got two new enemies here, Magidrakis. Uh, which can cast a defense spell, which lowers your defense. Uh, 12 HP, it can drop a club, which is absolutely useless. And then we got Lizard Flies, I believe? Yeah, Lizard Flies. 15 HP, and have a chance of dropping the lottery ticket. They're pretty much the exact same thing as the Magicians, otherwise, though. Stop spell works nowhere near as well against them. And Centipods, we saw last part, I think. Yeah, we did. That heal spell is really good, by the way, and hey, that looks familiar, that's right, we're back at the thing from the intro. How that night went all the way from here to our castle, I'm not sure. But welcome to Moonbrook Castle, and dear lord, those guys screwed this place up. Uh, the fire is actually not an enemy or anything like that, it's actually an NPC. You can talk to it, like this one here is the king. And that the daughter's been tra and apparently the princess, his daughter, was transformed into a dog. Gee. I wonder which dog she's been transformed into. And, uh, you don't know how to find it at first, uh, how to recover, make her recover at first. However, there is a way you can find out how to in this castle, which is pretty hard to notice. Purely because you have to leave outside this castle, this right here is why you should bring in the medical herbs, and then head right around now. Uh, also, I'm actually rather surprised. I went through this entire area and didn't get any new enemies. I usually encounter zombies in here, or even like the occasional metal slime, because those guys are back in the first game. They give a lot of experience here. And hey, a random knight. And the Mirror of Ra can break the spell, and I'll show her true self. However, we don't know where that is. Well, I do. Uh, you can find out a lot of this. I'm not really showing it off, but the NPCs in this game do hint towards a lot of stuff, like one of them hints towards a certain Cloak of Wind we'll be getting later on. Another one hints towards a certain thing in a four-paneled swamp. It's actually surprisingly useful, but I already know everything I need to know. So pretty much from the castle, just head west. Or east. <laughs> Heading west will make will put you back in the castle. The enemies around here hurt, by the way. Keep to the north here, and you'll pretty much be good, actually. Uh, here, there's the force panel swamp right there. Pretty much the guy says, look for an item in a place where you can see four bridges. And the top right here, we find the Mirror of Ra. And off screen, I'm gonna backtrack to Hamlin, because that took, like, five minutes. Now, let's see. Transformed into a common, common monk, uh, monk, mon yes, a common monk. <laughs> a common mutt, I wonder how many dogs we've seen throughout our journey. Yep. Just use the, uh, 
mirror of Ron the dog. Uh, if you talk to it, it will follow you around, so there's that. And with this, the enchantment's broken on Princess Peta, or is it Peta? I'm not sure. Uh, if, yeah, Peta's the name I got for her. And with that, we got our third and final party member. Uh, Peta is essentially the full-out mage, because uh, the way you can look at all the characters is that they're kind of extremes of one another. The main character here is pretty much all physical. The Prince of Canock is a mix between physical and magic. The Princess of Moonbrook, pure magic. And I actually want to buy some stuff here. Well, for, no, I don't want the freaking chainsickle. I want to buy a couple weapons and do some more level grinding before we continue on. I want to get the Princess of Moonbrook up to level 7. Uh, because she can learn some useful spells by then, and honestly, <laughs> she's really fragile. Uh, I've, if you want to grind, which I'm going to do, uh, there's some hills to the southeast of Hamlin here that give some really good experience points, around 100, anywhere between, uh, I think, around 65 to 100 per battle, so that's really good. Also, one thing I haven't mentioned about this game is the way the targeting system works. As you may have noticed, you actually can't target individual enemies, you can only target groups. The way it works is that when you target a group of enemies, it randomly targets one enemy within that group. Uh, so it's kind of, and, uh, the enemy that the AI was originally going to target dies, I suppose, it'll target the next one. It's kind of like Final Fantasy III onwards, actually. However, if, uh, the enemy dies, and there's more, another enemy in that group, uh, the next character will attack that one, but if there's no more enemies, it's not gonna attack at all, uh, even if there are other enemy groups. If that makes sense. I hope I explained that correctly. But, yeah, now I did some level grinding. That took around an hour, I'll admit. <laughs> and while doing that grinding, we got quite a few new spells, actually. Uh, the Prince of Kanak only got one new one, I believe, and that is Outside, which gets you out of caves. Uh, the Princess of Moonbrook, however, she starts off at level 1 with Healmore, which is better than the Prince of Kanak's heal. She got Sleep, which is the best status in the, uh, status in the game. Infernos, which is essentially Fireball that hits all, enemy, uh, all enemies in a group. And Surround, which will decrease in enemies' hit percentages. Pretty good, actually. But anyway, I want to buy the full plate armor here for the main character because, uh, well, <laughs> having your tank have better defense is always good. I'm looking at you, Cecil. Oh, Final Fantasy IV, I love you so. I will say, a lot of the early game equipment actually sells for quite a bit compared to later games. Anyway, they don't actually direct you as to where to go next, unless you talk to a certain guy who hints you towards a certain Cloak of Wind that I mentioned earlier. So we actually need to go look for that before we can, we can really do any big progression. So to do that, we have to head northeast. And down this random, well not so random beach, it's on the edge, so it makes some amount of sense, but still. And we got a new enemy here, Smoke. Uh, 15 HP, can drop clothes, I'm not sure what they do other than that, besides physical attacking. They are really, really easy. Gotta love that high encounter rate, right? <laughs> oh boy. Eh, still not as bad as Final Fantasy 2. <laughs> and I mean Japanese 2, not our 2. Uh, and we got the next two enemies, Zombie. I'm surprised I didn't run to these guys earlier. 60 HP, do nothing but a physical attacks, but they have a chance of dropping leather armor, which sells for about 130-something gold. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, they do hit hard, so watch out for that. And, uh, since they're undead, I might as well bring this up. Uh, they are not weak to fire. Uh, using, uh, all attack magic in the game, even though that's named after fire, shares the same element. And there's the tower we want to go to. Uh, towers are pretty much the game's main dungeons, for the most part. There's quite a few of these, from what I remember. Get a pretty good musical check for it. Uh... I will note that a lot of the... Don't go anywhere other than where I'm going, because they all lead in dead ends. And we got a new enemy here. 
Megapede! 20 HP, uh, can drop a leather shield, which also sells for a good amount. And like the Centipod, uh, they are, they have really high physical defense compared to other enemies, so it might take you a couple shots. Uh, fire attacks are also really good. Or, uh, magic is really good against them. Uh, if you talk to that soldier right there, you're pretty much saying that drop, that, uh, walking off to, into the blue space above into all sides of the area will cause you to fall out of the tower. Which can actually be used as a shortcut, I believe. You know what's one thing I like in RPGs? When after a random encounter, your music actually continues from where it left off. Because I get really annoyed when a song starts to just restart over and over again. Even a game I love, even in games I love like Final Fantasy IV. Anyway, to the we where we want to go is up to those stairs to our north. However, if you're playing the Game Boy Color version, go to the right there because you can find a chest that has a wizard's ring in it, which is MP recovery, and that's really good. That's if I recall the Game Boy Color version correctly. I haven't played that in a while. And, and here's the reason we came to here, which is that cloak of wind. Uh, it's pretty much plot important only, I believe. It reduces or er, pretty much nullifies any kind of damage you can take from falls. Uh, it's more plot important than anything, really. So now we're pretty much done here. We can leave. And how am I going to do that? By abusing that falling. Like so. It does put you a bit farther to the west than it should, but eh, you're still there. And with that, I'm gonna need to go all the way back to Hamlin. This took eight minutes. But along the way, we encountered a new enemy. Baboons! These guys are bad news. I recommend using sleep against them to put them to sleep. And use all your best attacks, be it Infernos, Fireball, or just your main character's normal attacks. 40 HP, have a chance of dropping the club, and as you can see, they hit hard. If I was, like, level 11, and I didn't do that grinding, uh, I'm pretty sure they could take out about half of my Princess Moonbrook, uh, Peta's HP in one shot. <laughs> Heck, they just did 15 damage there. Uh, anything with the Baboon Sprite is generally, like, the worst enemy kind in the game. Although, the worst one is definitely a certain golden enemy, if you know what I mean, viewers. And with that, we're pretty much done with this area of the world map for now. We want to head to the next area. Which, I don't think they hit you towards again either way. Uh, pretty much where we want to go is actually west of the Castle Moonbrook. And encounter quite a few baboons along the way! Oh boy. Pretty much when you see this monolith, you're good. <laughs> you're in a new enemy domain after this, so be glad. Though, um... Baboons are still around, though, that's right. Oh crap. In fact, we actually got harder enemies over here. Including one I don't think I meet up with, this part. No, I don't, actually. And we got the only new enemies I'm encountering over here for right now, I believe. Ghost Rats, which have 25 HP and have a chance of dropping a medical herb. Uh, like the army ants, they can actually uh, call in new enemies, and they hit hard, so watch out for that. And then you got Carnivog. Uh, Carnivogs... Uh, hmm... Uh, I'm trying to remember their stats. Uh, they have around 32 HP, if I recall correctly. Can drop a lottery ticket, which can be okay. Uh, they can put you to sleep, so watch out for that. Uh, sleep is actually oh, preferable as the status ailment to use on enemies. Because a lot of enemies don't have much of resistance to it, for some reason. Mind you, it's not the only game like that. I think, was it Final Fantasy 3 that I was very useful in? I know sleep was very useful in one Final Fantasy over all the rest. No, actually, I think it was Final Fantasy 2. Because I know Toad was very useful in 2. Huh. A lot of the enemies around here hit pretty hard. I recommend keeping your MP in check and using any M medical herbs you have first. And uh, once you see this random oasis, head north for the next area we want to go to. The enemies are... Uh, I also recommend running away from a couple battles every now and then just so you can save MP or HP. And just hope your running succeeds. And hey, another tower! But with that, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 4, we'll be checking out what's inside this tower and see if we can find anything of use. See you guys then.